Every time someone brings up ancient Egypt, you probably think of pyramids, scarabs, and cursed tables. Of course, that's not all they contributed to society, but that's pretty much all we know thanks to Hollywood. Sure, they didn't invent something as revolutionary as the wheel or fire, but they did build a bunch of amazing things that changed the world forever. In today's video, we've rounded up some of the most amazing things that the Egyptians built. First up, we have the lock. Yep, you heard that right. Whenever you lock your door at night or slide that deadbolt into place, you should thank ancient Egyptians for that. They practically laid down the foundation for the modern locks we have today. Now, it's not like the concept of security and locks wasn't already there. It was, only the lock itself wasn't what it is today. At first, people used to protect their homes and buildings by a simple bolt that was placed across the door. We're guessing that didn't cut it for the old Egyptians, because they came up with the concept of a proper lock and key system during the second millennium BC. This new security system was basically a pin tumbler lock. This was definitely a a little more complex than the lock in your front door. You see, a hollowed out bolt on the door had to be connected to a few pins, which could be controlled with a key. And not just any key, they used to have wooden keys back in the day. Anyway, it was great and all, but it had one big downside. It was big. And when we say big, we mean big. Believe it or not, some locks were two feet in length. The look might have been different, but they essentially worked in the same way as the locks today. We're guessing they had to go through a lot of redesigns over the years to look like they do now. Next, we have the plow and the improved version of the plow. Full disclosure, historians aren't entirely sure who came up with the concept of the plow, but there's plenty of evidence that suggests that ancient Egyptians were amongst the first people who actually used it. Time for a little history lesson. So according to a few reports, the plow has been around since 4000 BC. Of course they had, how should we put it, room for improvement, because apparently they weren't the best at plowing. Experts think they might have been built from modified hand tools because they were really light and thus ineffective. In fact, they're called scratch plows. Pretty self-explanatory, don't you think? That wasn't even the worst part. Turns out, it ran on nothing more than elbow grease. From what we can tell from historic paintings, a group of four men had to pull a plow through a field together. We don't know about you, but it doesn't sound like a great way to spend a day in the scorching Egyptian sun. Oh, and guess what? The Egyptians didn't think so either, so they reinvented the plow. Somewhere around 2000 BC, they decided to hook their plows to oxen. It went through a couple of upgrades, and soon they revolutionized farming. If it weren't for them, human Mankind might have been stuck with scratch plows for longer. Then they came up with the sickle. If everything you know about Egypt comes from pop culture, then you probably think the place looks like a big chunk of desert. That isn't entirely untrue, but there's definitely more to it than that. The truth is, Egyptians grew a variety of crops like grains, vegetables, and fruits. Not the barren land you thought, huh? Naturally, they were into farming and came up with a bunch of new ways to make it easier. And we're not just talking about the plow. They also introduced the sickle. You might have seen it in the hands of a few versions of the Grim Reaper, but that isn't the sickle of the ancient Egyptians. The actual sickle is slightly smaller, with a carved blade used for cutting and harvesting grain, like wheat and barley. Moving on to a much simpler invention, the table and other furniture. The humble chair and table might not look like much for one of the biggest inventions, but take a moment to picture your everyday life without it. Really makes you realize the importance of your everyday future, huh? So turns out you have ancient Egyptians to thank for that too. Before they came up with the humble chair and table, People simply sat on floors or small stools and used large blocks as sort of primitive benches. But around the mid-third millennium BC, Egyptians thought they needed an upgrade, and then came the furniture revolution. Okay, it's not officially called that, but we think it's pretty fitting. They upgraded from the large blocks to tables made of wood and alabaster, with legs and everything, giving us the prototype for the modern day table. The Egyptians didn't put it aside for some special purpose. In fact, they used it for everything, from dining to writing to playing board games. The the chair, on the other hand, was quite different from what they have today. Unlike the table, it wasn't a universal piece of furniture you'd find sitting in a public place or every home. Instead, it was a status symbol, a luxury enjoyed by the elites of Egypt. So the farmers and the peasants had to make do with the stools while the wealthy and royal enjoyed chairs with proper backs and armrests. Okay, but what made them different from our chairs? Well, they were made out of precious materials like ivory or ebony, and they'd be decorated with intricate carvings as well. Safe to say they weren't the chairs you get from Ikea. Now comes probably the most important invention after the wheel, clocks. I think we can all agree we'd be all over the place without clocks. Whether you depend on your fancy smanchy Apple watch or a good old analog wristwatch, one thing's for sure, they make our world go round. All thanks to our ancient Egyptian pals. From what we've gathered, they've invented two types of clocks, an obelisk and a water clock. Those of you who slept through history will save you a Google search. An obelisk was basically a kind of sun clock and essentially looks like the 
Washington Monument. The Egyptians would note the time based on how its shadow moved around the surface throughout the day. Interestingly enough, they identified both the longest and shortest days of the year using obelisks. You might see an obelisk or two around in real life even today, but the water clock? Well, let's just say the only place you'll see it would be on an inscription in a tomb. According to historians, the water clock was made out of a stone vessel with a tiny hole at the bottom. Now, this is where the water part comes in. The tiny hole we're talking about, that allowed the water to drip at a constant rate. There were marks spaced at different levels, kind of like the ones on your average clock today. And you could tell how many hours had passed by measuring the level of water with those marks. You probably couldn't tell time in one look for sure, but hey, they helped us get to that point. Next up, we've got probably the most fabulous thing Egyptians gave us, makeup. Okay, so this doesn't exactly come under things Egyptians built, but we feel it's worth mentioning here. We mean, even though it's not quite as important as their own inventions, but it gives them a rung for longevity, you know? Since it's never gone out of style. So, for Egyptians, makeup wasn't limited to the women of the society. In fact, like the grand chairs, makeup too was a symbol of wealth and status. As far as the upper class was concerned, the more the merrier. Basically, it was the Met Gala every day for them. What's more interesting is that they're sort of like the pioneers of the winged liner. Apparently, they were notorious for their heavy hand when it came to applying liner. Sephora might be the go-to place for your perfect liner liner, but the Egyptians made their own. They'd combine soot with a mineral called galena to make a black ointment called coal, which is still pretty popular today. Finally, the Egyptians saved us all from bad breath and introduced mouth fresheners. We bet you never thought Egyptians came up with the idea of breath mints, but it's true. Dental hygiene wasn't really that great back in the day. Sure, they didn't have insanely sugary soft drinks or junk food, but they still had to fight ugly tooth infections. Historians suggest it was because of the sand and stone in their diet. Of of course, they didn't eat sand or stones, but they did use it to grind flour for their bread, and that's how they ended up chewing some of it. Unfortunately for their teeth, it wore down the tooth enamel over time, exposing the pulp of the tooth and opening it up for all sorts of infections. To cover up the bad smell, they made breath mints out of boiled honey, fragrant herbs, and spices. And that about wraps up our video for today, folks. Which of these inventions surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.